And um, I'll be presenting today about communication skills. Most probably, this is just a refreshing. All of us, we know, we know what is communication. So just we will go in brief. And I'll try as much as I can to be brief, OK? So um, if anything, uh, probably you might ask me later. Uh, the main objectives will be uh, to define the term communication and understand um, its process, outline the barriers in communication process, explain types, uh, components of communication, then uh, to illustrate the features of effective communication. Um, now the term communication. What do you know about communication, if I'll ask you? Yeah, correct. Yes, Manal. Yeah, exchanging. Yeah. Like now, we are communicating with each other. So um, it's the act of conveying um, intended meanings from one entity or group to another um, uh, through the use of uh, mutually understood signs and uh, semiotic rules. So sometimes it could be through signals, symbols, words. Sometimes um, it differs. Um, or um, it's the act of process of using words, sounds, signs, uh, or behaviors to express or exchange information or to express your ideas, thoughts, and feelings. Uh, the process of communication. Of course, in order to communicate with each other, we need uh, certain elements to be there. So um, the source. Uh, which is the sender, the one who will pass the, the message or the, uh, whatever things that he wants to exchange with each other. Uh, so the sender, encoding, um, um, means just sending or passing the message. The channel, there should be, there should be a channel. Um, of course, I cannot communicate with someone who is far away from me. Like, for example, I'm sitting in this room. And the one, that, uh, the one or the person that I need to communicate with, he's just standing outside, so there will be a barrier. So I don't want, I want, so a channel should be there. Then decoding, the one who will receive the, the message uh, and um, whom we call him uh, the receiver. And it's, you know, it's in two ways. Um, types of communication, um, there are many types. But mainly, mainly, we are using most of the time the nonverbal communication and the verbal communication. The nonverbal communication, from its uh, its name, it includes the body language, um, the gesture, the facial expressions, um, the eye contact. Uh, the research has shown that up to 55 percent of our communication or the human communication uh, may occur through the nonverbal facial expressions. Then the other type is the verbal communication, which means the using words, um, either like written uh, letters, and those written letters could be formal, informal, so it varies. Now, um, <clears throat> in order to get an effective communication process, we need certain standards or certain things to be remembered. Uh, first, first of all, uh, use standard terminology when communicating information. Of course, I cannot come and just say any term that the, the person who is in front of me, he doesn't know, he cannot get me. So the things should be clear. Whenever I'm, I'm talking, the terms or the words that I'm using should be clear so that the person, the receiver, can get it easily. Then request and provide uh, clarification when needed. For example, I'm just passing a message. Of course, um, I understood the things that the thing that I'm passing, but the receiver might get a problem. He won't be able to grasp it or to get me easily. So once he asks for a clarification, I suppose to give a clarification. Then uh, ensure statements are direct and unambitious, as the previous one. Then inform the appropriate individuals when the mission or plan changed. Communicate all information needed by those individuals or team external to the team. Uh, use nonverbal communication appropriately. Uh, for example, sometimes when I'm talking, for example, I'm talking now to Moza. I'm using the for example, I'm using the nonverbal communication. I suppose to t when I'm talking to, I suppose to make sure that there is a, a proper eye contact here. Yeah? So. Um, 
When I'm talking to her, I suppose just to see in her eye, they should be appropriate eye contact instead of just passing the message to her and just not paying an attention to her and looking to someone else, which is not good. Then use proper order when uh, communicating information. Uh, I'm going very fast or is it okay? Okay. Uh, barriers of communication. Um, we might get obstacles while we are communicating with each other. Um, there are many um, things that may act as an ba a barrier, just um, I brought a few of them. Uh, physical barriers, like for example, uh, it talks about the nature of the environment. For example, uh, if the staff are located in different buildings or on different sites, as I say earlier, I'm here in this room and I want, I want to communicate with someone who's um, in front of me, but that person is not, right, he's not there right now and he's somewhere else, I cannot communicate how it means I won't be able to communicate or just to talk to him. Then the system design, like for example the, the, technology, the technology, I mean, if there is an error or any um, um, problem in the organizational structure which is unclear, so therefore it makes it confusing to know whom to communicate. I can say, no it's fine. <laughs> Sorry, we just started. And then the attitude, uh, attitudinal barrier. Um, uh, like for example, if there is poor management, if there is conflict, sometimes we might find that there are certain staff they are having conflict with each other, so they won't be able to communicate. Um, then fear of being uh, criticized. Of course, mo all of us, we don't, want, we don't like to be criticized. So, and there are certain people who really do not accept to be criticized. So this can be as a barrier when just communicating with others. Uh, now healthcare worker client communication, just remember these uh, three C's. Confirm feelings and thoughts when we are communicating with our clients. Then clarify information. Their patients, we are just transferring certain things to them, they won't be able to grasp easily so we need to clarify, to explain well to make the message that we are sending to be more clear. Then collaboration and cooperation. And of course, I'm dealing with my client. There should be two way of communication. There should be uh, cooperation, collaboration when I'm passing the message. Now, ways to communicate health-related information to client. What do you know? How we can share or exchange the information with our patients? Usually in our healthcare system, what we are doing? I mean, how we are enclosing the, the information to our patient? Can someone tell me? Bismillah. All right. Yeah, correct. Anyone else can? Yes, correct. Yeah. And then? We have the best communication actually should be verbally and non-verbally to make it more effect and be, to make them absorb and understand more. Uh, yeah. Because the facts and something which can be give proof, yeah. not only talking. Correct. And it change. All right. Give a chance. Correct. Thank you very much. So um, we can use, as you said, verbally, and verbally could be um, either in written ways, like for example, when we are giving the documents, like for example, the discharge summary, when they're being discharged from the hospital. Uh, so these are the, the written uh, ways or through emailing them, some countries they're doing like this or for example by face to face, like for example in the clinic when the patient is just in front of me I'm talking to him or through the phone calls, um, for example some genetic counsellors or other, um, means other um, co-workers, health co-workers, they're enclosing the, the information through phone calls. Um, so there are various ways of just enclosing and sharing the information to the patients. Um, just remember this, the more you listen, the better you will understand. So be an active listener, pay attention to whomever is communicating with you um, in order to, be, uh, to get uh, a good results and to be a better. That's it. Thank you very much. Grateful. Shukran. <laughs> so fast, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Do you have any question?
Sometimes sure. you will deal with the patients who not understanding anything about the situation. So yeah. Like, uh, I got difficulty. Who's not, they will not have any idea about the medical term and about the disease. When we get to communicate with them to open or discuss about, yeah. they, will, they will be stuck because they are not believing yeah. what's going on and they don't want to believe. Yeah, correct. In that situation, what they will do? How to start the communication with them? Uh, see, um, um, as we said earlier, you were not here. Um, using the proper terminologies when we are just dealing with the patients. Of course, if the one, someone who's not well educated, he won't be able to just um, grasp us or um, understand us easily. So just try to use as much as we can this, the simplest words while we are communicating with them. Especially if, um, some patients, you know, that they are critical and they're having complicated cases. In these cases, we need to be careful when uh, we are just choosing our words to, to enclose the information to them. <coughs> Try, you know, to go to their level. Any yeah, I got it. But I tried my best, but still uh, I got that one rejected. Um, uh, that's their right. You know, they will reject not because of the way that you are communicating. Maybe the information no, that they sure. receive, they might be, they might, be, uh, they might deny, or yeah. they might be, uh, they might be shocked. Yeah. Especially, for example, um, if we pass something which is really very serious, yeah. they won't easily be able to get it. Like us, if someone came and told uh, told us, like for example, um, something which is very serious. I'm a person. I'm a, hum a human being. Yeah. So I won't be able to just take it easily. So put put yourself all the time in uh, in his shoes so that you, you know what I did. I make another solution, which is today I give the news and I make you to express what you think, what yeah. you want. Then I give them appointment for the next two weeks yeah. to make them relax and adjust. Then I talk which is again. great and correct. Really, we should we should do it because but we I are cannot, humans. I don't see the partner together. It's only the woman alone. You know why? Because sometimes, uh, especially the husband, he won't accept any any things any things that we are just telling telling them both of them when they are just coming. Especially when it comes to the genetic areas. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, to the babies. It's, yeah, it's um, a, a sensitive. Yeah, and it's a sense a sensitive, um, you know, um, aspect to talk about it.